word loves me altogether word all together wonder for to me Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, virtual church. Good morning, champions. Good morning, champions. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. You know you good and save when you can come to church after Easter. <laughs> when you can come to church after Easter, you love the Lord. 
Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I love the Lord. <laughs> I love the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. There's this song. I don't know if we have it. Do we have it? No? There's so much in my head. Okay, don't worry about it. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> Amen. Clap your hands and give a praise. <laughs> Amen. I am excited on this morning. The Lord has been really blessing us on this week. Amen. There's this little song. Do you guys know this? I've got to tell you, Lord, I want to. How I, how I love you. Love you. Jesus. Jesus. For somebody, hit again. And I've got to tell you how I, how I worship. worship at oh Lord, how I adore you. Lord, I gotta, gotta, gotta. How I, how I, how I worship, worship and adore you. is one of those days for many of us where we just got to tell the Lord, I worship you, I adore you, but there is no trouble that I will ever see that you can't see me through. There is no broken heart that I will ever have that you can't mend. There is never a trauma that you can't bring me out of. When I'm alone, you raise my spirit by your touch. I 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many be glad that he paid it all? I'm glad that he paid it all. There was a word for somebody today on this morning. And I know you're in the building or you're either watching online, but this word is going to liberate you on this morning. This whole week I have been fighting and and and, and interceding, for I know that your breakthrough is nigh. Somebody yell in the top of your lungs, my breakthrough is nigh. Breakthrough. Uh, you know, you're saying it like you don't believe it. Say, my breakthrough is nigh. It's, my breakthrough is nigh. Yes, it is here, and God will be glorified on today. Just by way of an announcement, intercessory prayer workshop. Amen. May 25th. To June the people when God gives me word that I can share with you because you have integrity to intercede for the lives of the people of God. So this is a crucial, crucial teaching, and we're going to show you how and why we intercede. Somebody say intercession is needed. Intercession is needed. Amen. Empowerment. Somebody say empowerment. Empowerment. Amen. Every first Friday at 730. So we shot a little something out on Instagram, um, and we talked about men issues. And the response was just insane. I, people, Amen. different pastors and different persons who were involved with it were asking for us to do this again. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce empowerment on every first Friday. Somebody say first Friday. First Friday. And where we talk about the issues and the crises and the needs of men. Amen. Those of you with men in your lives and young men in your lives, this is a very important moment where we're pouring out. How many of you know that men need a safe space? Amen. Men need a safe space. So we're going to be ministering to one another on that time. Somebody say stronger together. Stronger together. Amen. Say stronger together. Stronger together. Amen. First lady has just been prophesying. Amen. Laying hands and giving word of God. I'm so excited. I'm just elated about what has been happening in our women's ministry, Stronger Together, May 21st. You do not want to miss it. The good part about it is our little area is going to be running out of room. So we're going to have to try to find a different place for it because God is blessing. But you are Stronger Together. Amen. Okay, I see all your thrills, everybody smiling, amen, seven-day fast, it's so important for what God is doing in your life, amen, amen, <laughs> May 1st through May 7th, amen, and I've changed the instructions up a little bit, God has given me a little uh, latitude, so if you are an early riser up before six, get up and eat something small. 
I thought y'all would be excited about that. I can eat something before it's sick. Praise the Lord. Now, I ain't tell you to go to the buffet or nothing like that. Don't, don't be trying to stuff up for, for the next eight, nine hours. Amen. But get up. If you get up before six, you know, drink a protein shake, you know, for those of you who are fitness people, or eat an apple or something like that so you can sustain uh, your energy during the fast. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Our prophetic instruction. <laughs> okay, we stop. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Isaiah 58 and 6. This is our petition. Lord, reveal and allow change church and everyone connected to me to escape our limitations. Lord, help us to escape our limitations. Let me say that again. Lord, Help us to escape our limitations. This is so important. Amen. Musicians, you're dismissed. Amen. Volunteers needed, guest services, media ministry, music ministry. Amen. We need you. Please come and be a part of it. God is blessing the ministry. We want to make sure we create avenues and, 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 and opportunities for people to serve. Lastly, we will be launching, amen, we got a lot going on, the world is opening. We are launching our young adult ministry, amen, amen. our young people, amen. <laughs> they will be having a think tank, amen, coming up shortly, so if you're interested, virtual church, if you're interested, please uh, email us and let us know so we can get you involved, amen. It is word time, can we all stand for the word, amen. 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 Play something softly, man of God. It's good to have you here. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you right now for this life-changing word, uh, this ministering word. Mm, I just feel change. I hear change breaking already in the spirit of God. I feel your liberty. Even now, I feel God releasing you out of your limitations, releasing you from the bondage to set you free. We declare newness of life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One more time. Clap your hands and give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. That was all right. Give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Yes. Our scripture is found in Matt. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I want you to say this with me. Say, I declare and decree. I declare and decree. That I will escape. That I will escape. Every chain. Every chain. Every bondage. Every bondage. Every room. Every room. Every dark space. Every dark that space. That is holding me back. That is holding from me back. From receiving what God has for me. From receiving what In God Jesus has for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands Amen. and give y'all going to get it after a while. Turn yourself Hallelujah. up a little bit. Yes. Matthew 6 and 12. It says, and forgive us. Our debts. Woo. As we forgive our debtors. Somebody say escaping. Escaping. The limitations. The limitations. Of unforgiveness. Of unforgiveness. Escaping. Escaping. The limitations. The limitations. Of unforgiveness. Of unforgiveness. Woo, Amen. I knew this was going to be a Hallelujah. tight one. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm going to break out in Jesus' name. I'm going to break out in say, Jesus' I'm gonna name. Say, I'm going to break out in Jesus' name. I'm going to break out in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Escaping. The limitation of unforgiveness. I can already tell by the atmosphere. You're a good man of God. I can already tell by the atmosphere that the enemy has been challenging you on this week about forgiving. I was initially excited because God gave me this powerful word. And it was called the grace for your 320 experience. And I was like, this is going to be lit. 
every once in a while, you know, I don't preach what I want to preach. This is not my church. Let me say this again. I don't preach what I want to preach because this is not my church. If it was up to me, I would preach nothing but blessings, miracles, breakthroughs, healings, deliverance. I would never preach anything to convict you. I just wouldn't. That, that's the truth. Because I would want you to leave here as if you went to, to this great motivational concert with Zig Ziglar and all these great motivational speakers like, you can do it. Let's go. Woo! And I would want you to leave her on top of the world. But unfortunately, that's not my prophetic assignment. My prophetic assignment is to preach and teach the word that God has for you. Somebody say, it's for me. It's for me. So, I wanted to show you the difference between God's grace and man's favor. While helping you to live in manifestation of grace in this life-changing season. But the Lord said to me before, listen, before I open up an extraordinary amount of grace in your life, they have to know that first, before you receive a great grace, sometimes you have to give it to someone who doesn't deserve it. Before you receive this great grace where God is going to allow you to prosper, as God is going to give you favor, you have to know what it feels like to give someone the grace that they don't deserve. God said before they access this life-changing grace in their 320 experience before I overflow them, they need to have an ideal of what grace costs. And the Lord said, many people have experienced giving away grace firsthand, and it's been difficult for them because God said he has challenged them to forgive those people who have done them wrong. Grace is amazing, and there's nothing we can do to deserve the unmerited favor and the assistance from God. But for what God has for you, before God allows you to access the portal of unusual, supernatural, extraordinary grace, God wants you to have an ideal of what this type of grace costs you because to walk in this type of grace, God has to fix the issue of unforgiveness in your heart. God said he's going to humble you by causing you to forgive someone that you feel does not deserve it. Ah. Because where you are going God cannot take the dimension of grace that he's going to give you. So before he allows you to access this dimension of grace, he's going to use an offense to purify your heart. Uh, Job 23 and 10 says, but he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, somebody say, try me. Try me. Try me means that he is going to take you to your limitation in that place that you are weak, in that place where you are frustrated, in that place where unforgiveness has bound you. And you're going to have an encounter and you're going to have to forgive someone in order to get what God has for you next. Somebody say next. Next. For you to access this level of grace where things just flow, where things just come together, where things just work out, you must forgive those people that you have developed a hatred for. (sighs) 
Let me say that again. Some of your 320 experience is so phenomenal. It's so great. God wants to bless you so that he is going to force you to forgive the hatred that you feel for that person. Because if he blesses you with a level of grace, you won't be able to sustain the amount of grace that you have. And that grace will destroy your life. So he's going to use that individual or those people that hurt you to usher you into the abundance. Somebody say, Lord, let me escape. Let me escape. The limitations of unforgiveness. The limitations of unforgiveness. Last week, I was on the altar. Do you mind if I take my time? Hey, man, I'm just going to take my time. Y'all might as well sit back, grab some potato salad, you know, get some hot wings, you know, drink some cocoa, you know, some Starbucks and just chill out. You know, we're going to talk a little bit. Last week, I was extremely disturbed. I was on the altar ministering to people, and I kept hearing in the spirit realm unforgiveness. If you remember when I was up here last week, I said, wait a minute, let me check. I was like, in my ears, am I hearing something? Wait, something must be wrong. Am I, uh, why do I keep hearing unforgiveness? I will pass by somebody in pain and hear unforgiveness. I will pass by someone dealing with depression and self-defeat, and I would hear the word unforgiveness. I would lay hands on someone, and I would hear the word unforgiveness. And this troubled me because I thought, how can so many people at one time be dealing with the crisis of unforgiveness? And so it troubled me. And then the Lord said that many of the people who have issues that are on this altar, that are dealing with crises, is because they have not forgiven someone. Go to Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Somebody give Kia a mic. I want you to hear this. It's up here, Kia. I want to use the NIV version. Listen to this. Go ahead and read, woman of God. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. 490 times in a day. Listen, 490 times in a day per, per person. Per person. This is not for in total. For the individual. So you, according to the word, I can be offended by you 490 times in a day. Before there is any justification not to forgive you. Oh. Listen, read on. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. That's like $10,000. Okay, read on. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He $50. grabbed. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Somebody say fifty dollars. Read on. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, 
he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what, he, what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? Listen, watch this. Read. In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Stop. Did you hear that? Read that last line again. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Let me read it from the King James Version. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. The word tormentors in the Greek means pain, toil, torment, and vexation. This is Jesus, the God of grace, the God of mercy. The God of peace saying, unless you forgive, grace will not cover that area in your life. Many of us are suffering in our bodies, suffering in our health because we are holding grudges that the enemy has been allowed legal access to torment you under. Ah. Many of you have opened up your life to demonic activities because you refuse to forgive. And where there is continued unrepentant forgiveness, there is torture. <sighs> Did we not just read that? God said you are on the edge of the next dimension of grace. But successfully overcoming the temptation of unforgiveness is the last test before you enter the grace for your 320 experience. Listen, there is always a type of death before you enter the next level of grace. Luke 23 and 34, write this down. Watch this. Then Jesus said, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Listen, this is a prophetic revelation. Somebody say prophetic revelation. That shows us before Jesus ascended to the next dimension, he had to forgive. He was dying for the same people that was killing him, but he had to forgive to complete the work on this dimension. My God. Listen, before there is an ascension to the next dimension of grace where you prosper and you enjoy unmerited favor, there is often a testing where you will have to forgive the very one that tried to take everything from you. Acts 7, 59 and 60 says, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. This man is losing his life. And with his last breath, 
He wasn't like, Lord, kill all these ninjas, please, please, please. He said, Lord, don't lay this charge to them. Because there is always a symbolic death before God lets you access greater glory. Because offense makes you realize how much of a price Jesus really paid on the cross by having you forgive someone that has done you wrong. God in his infinite love will always present to you a divine opportunity to forgive someone that has wronged you in order for you to appreciate the level of grace that you are about to live in. Pay attention. I want you to understand that it wasn't easy as you think for God to forgive us. Let me say that again. It wasn't as easy as you think for God to forgive us. God had to go through extraordinary levels to position us to be able to be forgiven. God had to go through extraordinary levels to position us to be forgiven. You're not getting this. Let me say it again. God had to go through extraordinary levels to position you uh, to be forgiven. Listen, God sent the law first, but the law was weak, and it only showed man what sin was, but it couldn't redeem man. Romans 8, 3 and 4 says, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemning sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. In other words, just telling us what sin was, just telling us what to do and what not to do was not enough. God had to personally wrap himself in his flesh and come down and die on the cross, suffer humiliation for you to be forgiven. <laughs> to this day, listen to me, listen. To this day, forgiveness is still an issue that is so deep that according to Ephesians 4 and 32, he forgives us for Christ's sake. Y'all not. It says, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Do you not know? If it had not been for Jesus, we would be wiped off of this planet. If it had not been for Jesus, ye would have been destroyed. I said, listen, I want you to understand something. I fully am convinced that every time that we habitually and perpetually stay in a sin, God desires to destroy us, but he looks at Jesus. Woo! He desires to wipe us out, but he doesn't see us. He sees Jesus. So forgiveness has a cost. You ever think about how freely we just freely ask for forgiveness? We just go do something. Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name. We go, Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive me in Jesus' name. Do you know the cost to be forgiven? Woo! Help me, Holy Ghost. We take advantage of the grace. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forgive. God forbid. Somebody go check that vehicle and make sure it's all right. Listen, God, listen to me. God forgiving us was so intense 
that he had to commend his love to us while we were yet in sin. Can I talk to the, have you ever been in love before? Anybody's ever been in love? No? Kind of? Sort of? Hey, you thought you were in love, but it was deep infatuation and lust? <laughs> Listen to this. God commending his love to us is like pre-forgiving your spouse for having an affair. Did you hear that? The Bible says that he commended, or another way I like to say it, he's commanded himself to love us while we were yet in sin. It is like you telling your spouse, I'm already going to forgive you for cheating on me tomorrow night. It's okay. Have your way. Do what you want. Come home satisfied. Get everything you need because when you get home, I'm going to have some potato salad, some grits, some egg, and some hand, a glass of grape Kool-Aid so you can refresh yourself when it's all over. Ah! Y'all don't want to hear the truth? Say, Lord, help me escape the limitations of my unforgiveness. Sometimes you got to make it personal like that. God has feelings. He feels. He feels. Y'all be waiting, but it wouldn't be with no dinner. Y'all be like, <laughs> come on in. Let me talk to you for a second. Listen, when God forgives us, he pardons us as if it never happened. As if it never happens. So with this, I want to make a statement that may contradict your theology, but its evidence can be seen in so many of your lives. Listen, though grace abounds, unforgiveness is the only condition that requires you to first exonerate someone else of their wrong to you before God completely exonerates you from your wrong to him. Yes, there are many times that God would allow grace to abound and bless you despite of. Lamentations 3, 21 and 23 says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we aren't consumed, for his compassions fell. If not, they are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. But for you to have this next level of experience, you must escape the limitations caused by unforgiveness. Some of you, it's, I mean, I, I don't think people understand the, the, the burden that a pastor or an apostle feels. That's why I'm getting the intercessory ministry. Do you not know how many car accidents the Lord wakes me up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and prays on your behalf? Do you, do you know how many times I see, I see what you're doing and God still says pray for them, intercede for them, that the hand of death has stayed off of their life. I see what you're involved in and we travail for you. God has me calling your name. So you can get the revelation. Listen, get this revelation that your delay is not God's. Nor has a demon spirit got into your life. But you are making a choice to live in the realm of limitations because you won't forgive. Let me tell you what the realm of spiritual limitation looks like. Spiritual limitation is the realm, this place. It's a spiritual rule that causes a restriction of ability, success, and overflow 
based on denying the sovereignty of Jesus Christ in a specific area of your life. It is a spiritual rule that causes a restriction. Somebody say restriction of ability. In other words, it stops your ability to be productive. And overflow. Somebody say overflow. Overflow. In other words, when you get your resources, you have just enough. And it's based on denying the sovereignty of Jesus Christ in a specific area of your life. Watch this. It is a legal, somebody say legal. Legal. It is a legally specified period which an action may be defeated or right discontinued based on you denying Jesus complete rulership over a required area of your life. Case in point, in 1 Samuel 15, though Saul was anointed king, he entered into limitations because of his unforgiveness. Isn't that terrible to be called and still be in limitations? To have God use you to bless somebody else and you can't bless yourself. Lay hands on other people and they get healed and you can't lay hands on yourself. And what has happened, we have made this Christian culture. It's a hoop point. What does it feel like when you pray for somebody and you don't get a breakthrough? The devil is alive. The same anointing that works for you should work for me. In other words, you are thriving in one area, but you're limited in another area because you won't forgive. You got all the money you need, but you're emotionally distraught because you won't forgive. You have all the friends you need, but you're constantly struggling because you won't forgive. Listen, listen, pay attention. Don't get this confused. You don't get stuck in spiritual limitations because there is not a total surrender to God. Our re- listen, our revelation of God goes through levels and dimensions. What God was to you here is not what he is to you here. So your understanding of God increases as the level and the dimensions increase. God doesn't require all of you at the same time. Somebody say he don't require all of me at the same time. He doesn't require all of you. We are incapable of giving our whole self at the same time. We got too many issues. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You got too many issues to give God all of you at the same time. However, spiritual limitation is caused by not surrendering to God in the area that God has placed a demand on. In other words, when God demands an action to disobey will lead you into limitations. With this, I got to ask you, who has God asked you forgive and you said I can't? Because when God puts a demand on something in your life, it is not an option to let it go. He demands you to let it go. He expects you to let it go. It will become rebellion, placing you in the realm of limitation. Can I be honest with you? I'm going to be transparent. One of the hardest, I know a thing or two about forgiving brothers. When I say brothers, not gender specific, just brothers, you know, men and women. So I was asking God something one day. I was like, I was speaking in tongues, blah, 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 blah. Lord, I feel your anointing. Because when I'm in prayer, it could just kind of slay me at my altar. I'm laid out just rolling on the floor. Just, oh, my God, thank you, Lord. I've been enjoying it. And then I asked for something specific. And then God, God brought this specific person and said, forgive him right now. I all, I'm going to confess, I came out of the spirit. Is this too transparent? Out. 
the spirit. Out the spirit. And every time I would get in God's presence real good, forgive this person. You, you know like that nauseous throw up in your mouth feeling you get? <laughs> forgive that person. Watch this. So I managed to work my way into saying, Lord, forgive them. Then the Lord said, pray for them. Pray for their ministry. That was about at least six months. Then I worked myself up to saying, Lord, bless the ministry. Let them overflow. Lord, let them have more than enough. Two, three, four, five services. Five musicians. Six praise teams. Overflow them. Then the Lord had to mitigate audacity to tell me to sow a seed of $1,000 to them. Can I really tell the truth? I'm going to tell the truth. Somebody said, keep it 100. Keep it 100. Say, keep it 100. Keep it 100. I'll pull the checkbook out. <laughs> and I wrote a check for 200. <laughs> now, I'm telling the truth. Okay. Baby, am I telling the truth? Wrote a check for $200. Okay. Walked myself right up to their church. In between the time I hit the door and got to the office, the Lord said, how many times have you asked me to bless you and you wasn't worthy of it and I still made a way for you? I pulled out that cash app, $1,000. Because I want God more than I want to hold a grudge against you. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Listen to this. When you're in disobedience, 1 Samuel 15 and 23 says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. You should be a king, but you're in rebellion. You should be a king, but you're being stubborn. You should be a homeowner, but you are justified in your unforgiveness. You should be royalty, but you're living beneath your privilege because you can't forgive. Ooh, oh Lord. Listen to this. You know you're in limitations when you feel like you're literally stuck and you don't have a reason why. Like, I got the education. Um, I have the experience. I got the looks. I got the charisma. I have the stuff. Well, yeah. well, how come my life isn't going anywhere? You feel like you're in a box. And listen, you can see everything you want. And it just gets in reach of your fingers, and then it falls apart. You get so far in a relationship, and then it crumbles. You get so close to that career, and then it falls apart. You get a glimpse of success, and it goes away. It is because you're stuck in the spiritual realm of limitations because of unforgiveness. Some of our marriages have been impacted because we are in unforgiveness and we're using our bodies. No, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to even go there. Oh, y'all looking at ice. I ain't scared. I got, got something for you in here. I'm not scared. But since I'm out here, since I'm out here, spouses, Stop manipulating your spouse with your affection and withholding what rightfully, according to the word of God, belongs to them to control them because you're in unforgiveness. I said it. Why are you going to leave your spouse vulnerable? Why are you going to leave them vulnerable? 
Not tonight. The Cosby's on. Tomorrow, not tonight. The Flintstones on. Mm -mm, I can't. My head is hurting. Mm, my neck and my back is hurting. Mm -mm, I can't. You remember you didn't take out the trash last year? Mm, I can't. You remember you were supposed to wash the car? Well, the car ain't washed, and it's been a decade. I, I just can't. Who? I just. I'm in trouble, Doc. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And then we wonder why people steal spouses when we don't do our part. I refuse to let Mrs. Laura Wallace go out of the house feeling some type of way. You better get up and drink a glass of Red Bull and some orange juice and work out, do something. <laughs> Stop letting unforgiveness destroy your home. Now, before you act like this message isn't for you, because you've forgiven everybody that has ever done you wrong, does it mean that there aren't things in your life that God wants from you? Some of you are in the realm of limitation because pride won't let you confess your fault. Some of you are in the realm of limitations because pride won't let you confess your fault. James 5 and 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you be healed. The effectual for every prayer of the righteous man avails much. Listen, the Bible says confession is good for the soul. And you are in limitation because you don't have nobody to keep it 100 with. Can I be transparent? Y'all know me. I, I keep it 100. I don't have no other. I have a circle of pastors. I got three pastors that I call when I'm tripping. They don't, they don't want to hear this. So come on, play some, Doc. They, they don't. I got three men of God. I'm anointed, prophetic. I hear from the Lord. But there is a level of accountability that comes when you confess your fault. And whenever I'm tripping, man of God, I just want you to know, I'm tripping. Can you please pray for me? Because I don't want to fall. Some of you need to have that level of accountability with somebody. If you really want to be saved, there's accountability that you need. Girl, listen, I'm calling. I need accountability. He had this orange muscle shirt on, looked like he had lumps everywhere. Pray for me so I'll get stronger in the Lord. Bruh, if she, it's a true statement. I counseled, I counseled this preacher that was having issues with these young ladies. And so you know what I told him? I said, this is what you do, man of God. I want you to change the name of them in your phone. And when the phone rings, I wanted to say, don't lose your anointing. Don't lose your anointing. Don't lose your anointing. Another, I'm dead serious. Another person I told him the name, it's not worth it. This is what we need true Christianity. We don't all walk around, I'm anointed of the Lord and I never feel anything. There's no temptation up on me. I'm so great. Things are going so well and I have no faults. I'm getting That's not Christianity. 
Christianity says, I feel it. I just don't give into it. And if I give into it, God provides a way that for my escape. We're still talking about limitations and forgiveness. Listen, let me help you with this. Watch this. Some of you are entered into the realm of limitations because fear won't let you obey God's voice. Some of you are in the realm of limitations because you won't trust God to take you beyond where you are right now. There's scriptures. I'm going to go through Bible study and give it to you. We're almost out of time. Watch this. Some of you are in the realm of limitation because you told God who you are instead of receiving the word spoken over your life. Can I take some time on this one right here? Numbers 13 and 33 says, and there we saw the giant, the sons of Anak which come of the giant, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So let me tell you the story really quick. Moses had sent spies to spy the land. They came back with fruit from the land. They came back with, with expressions of the land is flowing with milk and honey. But then they said, but we were grasshoppers in our own sight. So because of that, we were grasshoppers in there. Tell somebody, say neighbor. Neighbor. How you see yourself. How you see yourself. Is showing up. Is showing up. And I will treat you. And I will treat you. How you see yourself. Can I say that again? I'm almost done. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Look at somebody else. Say, say, yeah, this, this, yeah. And look at somebody else. Yeah. Y'all ain't looking too friendly. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, you got to look hard. You got to look across the room or something. Because uh, y'all looking pretty mean in here. There's all kind of unforgiveness going on up in there. Say neighbor. Neighbor. How you feel about yourself. How you feel about yourself. Is showing up. Is showing up. And I am obligated. And I am obligated. To treat you. To treat you. Like you're showing me. Like you're showing me. I am obligated. To treat you. Like you are showing me. Because if you don't see value in you, neither will I. If you don't see strength in you, neither will I. Have you ever had to fight? So- oh, sorry. I ain't been saved my whole life. And I ain't no fighter, you know, but God forbid, you know, I ain't no killer, but don't push me. <laughs> Holy hands. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was about to fight this dude, and he's like, whoa. Like, come on, Doc, I'm going to put these things on. Was, yeah, let's go. He started doing all this stuff. I said, <laughs> his self-belief was so strong. <laughs> it had me second guessing myself. <laughs> Maybe I don't want this thing. Maybe it may be too much for me. (laughs) But he believed to the point where I got convinced. (laughs) I said, okay, brother, we good. Go ahead, take the line. Go ahead, you can have it. (laughs) 
<laughs> but how do you listen? This is even in a marriage. Laura and I have a marriage ministry. How you see yourself is how your spouse will see you. If I always got to encourage you to do something before you get up enough, get up to do it yourself. Eventually, I'm going to move you out the way. Is this too much? Wait, mama. Wait. Watch this. You can be out cutting the grass. And your spouse got to keep encouraging. Oh, baby, you cutting the grass so good. Look at you. You look so good cutting the grass. Uh, next time you're cutting the grass. Oh, my goodness. I ain't never seen anybody cut the grass like you. You just good. Look at them lines. They're so pretty and so neat. The next time. Oh, baby, you're doing a good job. After a while, she's going to be like, well, get out of the way. Let me cut the grass because I'm tired of picking you up what you don't have. you got to see yourself as a conqueror to be treated like a conqueror. And until you see that, you will stay in the realm of unlimited limitation. We don't have enough time to get into the forgiveness part. We'll, we'll continue on. But I want to challenge you. Listen to me. I want to challenge you. I want you to have an honest, don't, don't stand up. I want you to sit there and have an honest conversation with God. And I want you to repent first for every disobedient act when the Lord shows you to do it himself. There is not a person in here that is exempt. Lord, forgive me saying and something and ignoring you to get out of it. God wants you to be a part. He wants you to be led so much that your decisions are governed by him. Lord, forgive me for allowing myself to sit in limitation. Now, watch. Now, I want you to forgive yourself for letting yourself down. Some of you have, have had opportunities. And you wouldn't do it because you didn't believe it was for you. Why pay? Three thousand two hundred thirty-two thousand three million two hundred thousand three trillion two million dollars for a green suit, and you don't believe it's for you. Why go on a date and you feel like he gonna reject you or she gonna reject you? I don't know why I'm doing this. He ain't gonna be no good. I don't know why I'm doing this, man. I keep, miss, I keep meeting these losers. I don't know why I'm training. I'm never going to fight. Where is your faith in God? Where is your faith in God? Shall we stand? While I was speaking, did something cross your mind about a person you had unforgiveness for? If you did, just kind of blank your eyes like this. You ain't got to lift your hands up. Just kind of blank like this. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? No. 
Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Is it really worth it? No. Think about what you could have if you just set out to give. God, listen, so many people struggle with unforgiveness. Listen, so many people struggle with unforgiveness because they won't do the work when God tells them to do it. I had to write a thousand, I had to Venmo or cash up a thousand dollars to somebody that hurt my feelings. And then after that, God gave me the revelation of the 320 experience. I had to forgive someone, and right after that, the Lord gave me my house. My marriage with Lord didn't get beautiful until we looked at each other and said, baby, I forgive you. You ain't perfect, and I'm not perfect, but let's pick up the pieces and let's put this thing together. I'm down with you like four flats and no engine. That's down right there, Jack. You ain't going no wares. <laughs> Say this with me. Say, I forgive. I forgive. Say it again. I forgive. I forgive. One more time. Say, I forgive. I forgive. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just ask of you right now, Lord, to touch every single person in this place as we begin to forgive. Lord, ooh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. As we begin to do the works of forgiveness, help us not to feel played by the enemy. Help that. Help us not to be tormented by that spirit that makes us feel stupid. Hey, 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 I feel it. I feel it as we help us not feel stupid in the works, but after we sow or do the works, Lord, let us feel the burdens being lighter in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, help us to walk in your grace. Lord, we don't we don't want to be there any longer. We don't want to sit in that place any longer. We don't want to be bound any longer. Father, show us the works and what we must do, Lord. Don't let the enemy deceive us, Lord. We'll check with the man and the woman of God for prophetic instruction. But, Lord, we're ready to do the work so you can release us from this burden because we're tired of being in the same place and going through the same thing over and over and over again. Lord, we surrender now. And as we begin to clap our hands, it is surrender and giving you thanks for what you're going to do. And we praise you right now. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Do me a favor. I see this in the spirit. Virtual church, I want you to type in I forgive. This is what I see in the spirit. Grab the person's hand that's next to you. Grab the person's hand that's next to you. And begin to pray for them that they forgive the person who has offended them. Begin to pray right now. Pray right now. Pray right now. Ooh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, help us. God, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. I stop worrying. Worrying about bad things when I let go and I let God let God have His way. That's when things start happening. When I stop looking at back then, when I let Go and I let God, let God have his way. Amen. Clap our hands and give God praise. Amen.
You may be seated as we prepare for our giving on today. As we prepare for our giving, I'm asking you to get the best seed that you have and trust God. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. We are not defeated. We are victorious. We are healed. We are whole. We are strong. We are capable. Amen. Type in your prayer requests. And I'm asking you as you have your resources, listen, envelopes. Get the envelopes, please. Can you pass out envelopes? How many of you have been blessed during this season of your life? How did that job interview go? Listen, really quick, as you're preparing for your giving, a pastor friend of mine sold into 320. Listen, he sold into 320. And he got approved for a $120,000 line of credit. Listen, that was originally just $19,000 before he sold. How's your son doing? All right. The Lord said 95. Was it 90 or 95 percent? The Lord said. That's what the Lord said in the text message, right? And it is so. Clap your hands and give him praise. It's not done, no. How's Cameron? Cameron? Did I say that right? Kamari? Okay. How is he? Okay. Talk to me after church. And it is so. It is so. It is so. Amen. If you have your envelopes in your hand, please come forward. Come forward. Come forward, everyone. If you have, amen, whatever you are giving, please come forward. And let's lay it at the altar. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. How are you feeling? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Amen. We're praying. Hey, prophet. <laughs> amen. And it is so. 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 Amen. Come on up. Kenya, family, come on up. Come on up. Everybody, I want you to put something on the altar. Put something on the altar. Everybody that can and will. Put something on the altar. Don't give up. Listen, don't give up. I can't tell you how many blessings I've gotten when it was impossible. I can't tell you how many times God blessed me at the midnight hour. Do not let skepticism set into your heart. You are in a faith fight. You are in a faith fight. A faith fight for your home. A faith fight for your family. You're in a faith fight. Can you put the giving platform up, Dylan? No, the other one. No music, the other one. Put our proclamation up. I rebuke that spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus. Don't do it. Don't do it. I feel your doubt, even as I stand here. Don't do it. Because if you listen, the other party does not have the faith that is required. You do. If you doubt, I can't tell you, eight months to build a house, and we did not have the $133,000 to move in. But at the last hour, have you been to my house yet? See, that's your fault, because you should have came on up. God didn't give me that house for me. He gave me that house for people like you. To know that God is able. I feel it. 
Listen, I want every faith, every person of faith, I know this is a little different. I want every person of faith to come lay your hands on this woman of God right now. I'm talking about the faith walkers, those people who had to see hail and high water and God came through. Come and lay your hands on this woman of God. Only faith walkers, only faith walkers. Father, in the name, place something. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, place. Father, this is part of inter- Father, we intercede for this woman of God. Father, we intercede for this woman of God in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, you said it, and we believe that it shall be done, Lord. Lord, we trust you right now. We trust you right now. Strengthen her. Increase her faith. And it is so. Don't you let go. Don't you dare let go. I can feel. Don't do it. Are you listening to me? And it is so in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give him praise. Let me speak this over your life. Let me read it over you. Lord, I confess this is our best sacrifice we live to thee. Thank you for the opportunity to give to you first of what you have given to us. According to your word, we receive financial increase, blessings and favor, miracles and new ideals, concepts and opportunities, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, unexpected debt cancellation that will increase our resources a hundredfold. Lord, send prosperity now, according to Psalms 118 and 25. I denounce every negative confession over my finances, our investments and properties that we own and will own in Jesus' name. We declare money comes to us now to fulfill our destiny and aid us in our kingdom purpose. We are not broke. We have more than enough. We are not living in lack. We are living in a surplus of abundance. Our offering empowers our church to have more than enough. We see by faith for our global expansion that will result in worldwide mission and acts of kindness. As a tither, the devourer is rebuked. Our harvest is protected. In obedience to your word, we declare and decree that we now live in the overflow. And it is so in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give them praise. Amen. You may be seated. Don't you dare give up. Come on, man. Okay. Listen, before we leave, I just wanted to see if anybody wanted to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are not in right relationship, oh, my God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Also, before we leave, Brittany, don't go nowhere. Amen. This will be Brittany's last Sunday with us. God is blessing her. Amen. Just an amazing talent. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done for us. You're a great person. I pray that he continues to bless you. Amen. Shall we stand all over the building? Hallelujah. And it is so. 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 Riba kashe de ni kasi rompa na kasi. Vala na riba kasi reme. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can we give the Lord a hand one more time? Can we give the Lord a hand one more time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up, Lord. And let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put God's name upon our children, and God will bless them. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. We thank you for this time, Lord, that your word has entered into our heart, Father God. Grace us, Lord, for the heart to forgive, oh Lord, that we may forgive those who hurt us, Lord, those who have deceived us, Lord, those who have done us wrong, oh God. Help us to forgive them, Father God, that we may give our heart fully unto you, Lord. Father God, that we can be released from the limitations of our life, Lord. Let this word carry with us throughout our week, oh God. Lord, may your presence continue to stay with us throughout our week, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, that we may come and see you again the next week and continue to exalt you, continue to lift you up, that you may be exemplified, that we may be able to represent Christ and to glorify you, oh God, that you might be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, oh Lord. And everybody said, amen. Now go live the changed life. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.